In the first part of this discussion, we went over the basics of the Cthulhu myth cycle and looked at how Lovecraft's story Dagon started it all. This time, we will see how, using the Call of Cthulhu and the Shadow over Innsmouth, the myth expanded with hints to a possible frightening conclusion, how the human race will end. Hello and welcome to NDM English. My name is Nate and these are my notes. What stories are to be included in the Cthulhu myth depends on the accepted reasoning. For a few, every story is part of his cosmic horror vision. More discerning or careful readers have a much shorter list that includes about 10 or 20 stories. One main argument is if a single element, such as the town of Arkham, the Necronomicon, or the great Yog sothoth are mentioned, then it should be included in the list. Others argue that focuses too much on inconsequential name drops that don't necessarily add any new elements. Probably the biggest mistake is to assume only a handful of stories are myth material. This very review only looks at less than a handful of stories that make the whole. But these are used as examples of how the author connected elements together to grow the literary world of his imagination. A few other important stories to read would be The Nameless City, where the mad poet Abdul Alorzred, who wrote the Necronomicon, is mentioned, along with the important couplet, That is not dead which can eternal lie, and with strange eons even death may die. It is a quote that will come up again in relation to the Cthulhu monster. The Dunwich Horror, that is mentioned in part one of this discussion, and a complete discussion all about the story, of course mentions Cthulhu and those around it. The Whisperer in the Darkness, about an extraterrestrial that steals human brains and takes over their bodies. Because of its mention of interdimensional space, elder things, demigods, unknown materials, and other details. The Dreams in the Witch House adds to the mythos atmosphere. The novella At the Mountain of Madness gives even more background to what happened at least a billion years before Earth life existed. Finally, although not exclusively, the thing on the doorstep has a connection to the shadow over Innsmouth, and therefore the Cthulhu myth. Comment below if you think these are the most important Cthulhu mythos stories, along with the other two that will be explored. Or should others be included? Do any dream cycle stories belong here? In the famous story that has reached pop culture status, Call of Cthulhu, the large stone monolith in the Dagon story is transformed into a small statue. There are many differences, such as one strange monster instead of a few monsters battling a whale. There is an inscription of words rather than only pictures. However, the main purpose of worship to a large water deity is still implied. The shape of the monster has a human-like body, dragon wings, and most important, an octopus head. Other features where the figure sits indicates a creature of enormous size. Little as the statue is, it still remains as an awe-inspiring and as huge as one found by the sailor that had gone insane. The true start of the story is told in the middle, when another ship disaster leaves men drifting into the uncharted waters. A ship is sunk by pirates, and prisoners are taken. These prisoners soon overtake the pirates by rebelling and take command of their ship. After this chaos and violence, they run into the same unstable black muck as in the Dagon story. Just as before, this muck changes into a dark landmass that the sailors can then explore. The word Cyclopean that Lovecraft loves to use is in this as well describing the huge unbelievable structure that the sailors start to climb over. With the strange discovery, there is no longer the difference between pirate and fighting sailors. Both want to find out what it is that is on this island, although they all have a general fear mixed with their curiosity that sends them wanting to run away at the same time they want to look at what might be in the huge door that they find. Where the Dagon Island had only one architectural feature with the stone column, most of this island is artificial. Of course, this is the lair of Cthulhu, who is soon to be awakened by these men. 
where worship was strongly hinted at in the Dagon story, it becomes a major focus here. Those who worship the Cthulhu monster are not themselves aliens. They are humans who have lost touch with civilization in one way or another, and sacrifice human life. It is a secret death cult indicated to exist in all pockets of the earth. Even the most primitive of people shun and are afraid of them. The reason for their rituals and devotions are not entirely understood, but if they are successful, a completely new moral order will take over and rule. Not one of civilization and equality, but total and complete social chaos. By common human standards, there will be no rules, but whatever one wants to do, and to whoever. Decency will be replaced by decadency of the highest disorder. As to be expected from the examples of other stories, the line between reality and nightmares is put into question when Cthulhu invades human consciousness. These are not only sleeping dreams, but full-blown waking visions. Those who are already on the edge of sanity and the artistic are the most susceptible to Cthulhu's influence. Sculptures and pictures of the immense octopus, dragon, humanoid monster are made with unusual skill. Dreams are recorded warnings of death and destruction with the coming of something best kept a secret. The physical and mental are not separated from each other. Many parts of the earth are interrupted by earthquakes. At the same time, there's the hysteria outbreaks. Very few recognize the relationship and fewer see it as a premonition to greater disaster. People who have long-term or deep contact with Cthulhu's thoughts mentally devolve into madness. The story reinforces the connection between cataclysm, nightmarish dreams, and insanity. This shouldn't be too surprising considering Lovecraft feared for his own sanity. When he became an adult, his mother lost touch with reality and was put into a mental institution. He thought the same fate was awaiting him for when he became older, although he did end up dying at a young age instead. Cthulhu the monster isn't fully material and lives in the dream world. It is known as the dream sleeper who has been in hibernation for many eons of time. The sailors had awakened it from slumber with the possibility of the end of the world. Luckily this wasn't to be because its time had not yet come. The entity hesitated to step off its floating home and drop into the water. A surviving sailor noticed this and decided to do the unthinkable to save his boat, plowing directly into the great beast. With quick thinking, the sailor saves himself and possibly the planet by facing the greatest fear head on before it becomes completely solid. The dreamer who gives dreams was a dream. Not without consequences because it did kill, but only in the confines of its dreamlike lair. This touches on the old question, if someone dies in a dream, can they die in real life? Although studies have suggested dreams can warn against or interpret physical ailments, they cannot in fact kill you. In the context of Lovecraft, the dream world has more power than mere symbolism. It can touch the outside world with the possibility of destruction. Dreams are transformative. One of the most important transformation stories is The Shadow Over Innsmouth that takes the Cthulhu myth and plays out its consequences. There is an assumption that Lovecraft's tales express human existence as a non-player in the vast unseen and unknowable expanse of time and space. Nothing that humans can do matters and they are destined to be wiped out by things they cannot control. That is only a half-truth. Humans may not be able to protect themselves against apocalyptic forces, but they can speed up or even kickstart the process of total annihilation. A man named Obed Marsh tries to save the town of Innsmouth by making a deal with sea-dwelling devils. He only succeeds in opening up a Pandora's box of horrors. These terrors have the potential to spread out from the town to other places and eventually encompass the whole of the planet. All of the elements of the myth set up by Dagon and the Call of Cthulhu are present in the story of the wharf town of Innsmouth. A set of priests worship Dagon while wearing a stylized ancient looking gold headband with aquatic animals as a motif. 
the stone obelisk seen by the World War I survivor becomes a small statue and finally valuable jewelry that others covet. It has changed to something much more personal. A disaster or set of disasters sets up the discovery of a black volcanic island, but doesn't remain in an undisclosed area of the ocean. Directly offshore of Innsmouth is a distinct black landmass of mysterious presence and activity. The apocalyptic danger is getting closer. A secret society of cultists in the South Pacific were destroyed by their neighbors, but the rich American Obed Marsh brought their beliefs to the eastern United States in hopes of saving his community from financial ruin. The Dagon religion has taken over traditional Christian and secular organizations. Obed Marsh introduced all of this into his town to try and save it, and in a way he did, but not in the way that he had hoped. The cure was much worse than the disease. All that remains is a strong fishing industry and a trade in gold trinkets. Worse is that it transforms the population into something inhuman. Greed and good intentions do not mix. It is in the dreams of the main character that the true end product of the Cthulhu myth comes to a tentative conclusion. Other stories may contradict or end differently, but the shadow over Innsmouth has an authority about it that overrides other possibilities. In danger of giving too much away, the details will be avoided. What the main character dreams is his becoming part of the Innsmouth population. This shouldn't be possible as an outsider, but he discovers hidden relations when researching the town more. As usual with Lovecraft, he wonders if he's losing his sanity, but in this case, knowing he remains sane, no matter what he might be experiencing or others believe. He becomes ever more drawn to the sea. The terrible ending to the Cthulhu myth belongs to that sea, and not just in the form of the Cthulhu monster. There are what is called the Deep Ones, who live under the water in a great civilization that reaches thousands of years into the past. Some Lovecraft enthusiasts believe they are a smaller version of the figure found on the stone obelisk, possibly evolving over time, shrinking to human size. It is implied by their expressing hopes that Cthulhu awakens to once again rule, that the Dagon they worship is actually Cthulhu by another name. At the same time, these underwater dwellers are spreading the dreaded shape-shifting Shoggoths all over the earth. For what reason is not explained, certainly it is to use them as tools of some kind. Most fearful of all is their plans to either kill off humanity or crossbreed with them until extinction. The reason that is possible is because humans had evolved from creatures that have come from the water. Therefore, humans are in some ways related to the Deep Ones, no matter how far back in that past. To sum up the Cthulhu myth, it is the story of human social degradation and extinction. It is how human civilization is destroyed by aliens from other dimensions and relatively non-evolved creatures from the depths of the sea. These are helped by wicked people who worship chaos. Even those forces that seem so alien are to some extent an other part of humanity, either creators, imposters, or ancestors. Once again, for a man who is known as an atheist, the religious moral ideals are still present. Wicked, and evil might not be described beyond the generalizations, but it means opposition to something. The author never sides with the wizards or cultists. Lovecraft may not believe in the ordered structure and teachings of a church, but he fears the insecurity of a disorganized world. Make sure to click on the subscribe button and notification bell to not miss any future English Notes programs. Thank you for listening.